it's been really career changing for them because they can come here and we're all one versus, you know, you list with one of us, you list with all of us. Hello and welcome to episode 206 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by co-owners of Realty One Group Gold Standard, Dion Malish and Mike Hanlon. Now nearly seven years into launching Realty One Group Gold Standard, both Dion and Mike have built successful real estate careers after transitioning into the industry from outside professions. Throughout our conversation, we dive into how Realty One Group Gold Standard was formed, what Dion and Mike look for when bringing on new agents, and why collaboration between the leadership team and agents themselves play such a major role in the brokerage's success. But before we get on with the day's featured interview, if you or someone else on your team has a story of real estate success or tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new guests to inspire our listeners. And lastly, if you enjoy this conversation and want to hear more, be sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents Podcast. We stream on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. All right, let's get on with our conversation with Dion Malish and Mike Hamlin. Be sure to check out the episode description. We've added several links where you can follow and connect with Realty One Group Gold Standard. Well, really the way I like to start everything out is if you could uh, just introduce yourselves to us a little bit, uh, give us a brief background on yourselves and um, where you're at. So I'm Dion Malish. I'm from Pittsburgh. I've lived here my whole life and I also, I really love St. Augustine where you're at, Michael. So I, someday I plan on being in Florida. I was a graphic designer for 17 years before I got into real estate and I realized that marrying the two industries was really good for me. And I was able to do the things that people couldn't do 20 years ago. And nowadays Canva take, has taken over and at least people, have stu- maybe their stuff looks a little better because of Canva. So I've been entrepreneurial pretty much my whole life. I got out of art school. I went into straight to owning my own business. And then I got a job for a couple of years because I wanted insurance and I wanted the stability realizing that this is definitely not the way for me. So I got back out of that and continued on with my entrepreneurial spirit. And, you know, so we, uh, we, I've been in real estate 20 years. We decided about seven years ago that we were going to open a real estate franchise. It's something I did never want to do. And then I met this guy named Mike and he's like, you should look at this brand. And I'm like, I don't really want to look at this brand because I don't want to have a real estate company. It wasn't my lifelong dream. So, Knowing that I wanted to be an entrepreneur was one thing, but dreaming about a real estate company was not it. But then I met the uh, the brand of Realty One Group and I fell in love with the branding and it was black and gold like our Steelers and Penguins and Pirates too. And I fell in love with the whole idea of disrupting a market. So when we were able to bring the franchise here, we were the first franchise of Realty One Group in the Pittsburgh region. It was really fun to disrupt. And so that excited me more than more than the idea of having a real estate company. It was the fact that we could do something so unique to the Pittsburgh region. So that's a little about me. I am I'm married. I have an amazing husband and I have a dog. And that's about that's about it. Yeah. And Mike, you also you were not, uh, you know, real estate was not your first uh, career either. Nope. Nope. So uh, uh, I was uh, my two passions in life has always been since I was a young kid, was either houses or health. So I was either going to be an architect or a chiropractor. I uh, realized I hated the curriculum that would entail becoming an architect. Architect. So uh, about uh, middle school, I decided to go to chiropractic route uh, and focused all my energy on becoming a chiropractor. Uh, entered chiropractic school at the age of 20. I uh, was a doctor by 24 uh, and practiced for 10 years. Uh, and then I'm sure we can get into a little more, you know, uh, in the podcast here about, you know, the transition and why transition, but uh, transition into real estate. Uh, hung my license at Keller Williams where I met uh, Dion and uh, I was actually offered ownership in our Keller Williams local market. And that what got me thinking about, I was like Dion, very entrepreneurial my whole life, you know, running my own businesses, but got me thinking about owning a real estate brokerage and looked into the Keller Williams model and, and liked the model, but just realized that they weren't running it appropriately, you know, like, like towards, you know, the, all, you know, they weren't firing at all cylinders as a Keller Williams franchise. 
E and and this has left a lot to be desired. So that's why I started looking around other models and I came across Realty One Group and like Dion said, uh, I introduced it to her and you know fast forward, you know we have uh, about two hundred agents. You know we've closed over two billion dollars in sales over the last uh, five and a half years uh, in operations and uh, you know we just uh, you know love helping the agents you know achieve. Uh, their goals. And like Dion said, we were a disruptor because it was an awesome model to bring into the market to put more money back into the agent's pockets you know, so they can earn those hard, hard-earned commissions and, and use that extra money to market themselves for lead generation and continue to accelerate their real estate career. So it's been an awesome ride. Uh, you know, me and Dion, uh, we've been partners for you know about six, seven years now, uh, and we worked super well together. And it's just uh, we're excited to be on the show here today. Yeah, absolutely. And I definitely want to get into, um, you know, you guys deciding to partner together and launching uh, your group. But first, uh, you know, and I guess we'll start with Dion, just, you know, when it came to making that transition, um, you know, a lot of our listeners are either new agents or we do get a lot of people that are listeners uh, that, you know, maybe would like to have a career in real estate, but are, you know, in their nine to five uh, right now and are scared to make that jump. What was it, uh, you know, for you specifically that, you know, helped you uh, make that transition? And then what were some of your, what were some of the things that helped ensure your success? So for me, it was easy to transition because I was going through a loss of my company. So I had no choice. I had to pick something else. I had to have something that I didn't have all my eggs in one basket. So being a graphic designer and I was doing very well at that, uh, my company, I had a partnership that failed. And at that time, I decided to walk away from it. When I did, I thought, I need something else. I want something that I can do both at the same time which is what I would recommend for anybody that's starting a real estate <laughs> in business. They should start while they have a job and start doing it on the side. I think that would be very helpful because it takes a while to make money. But for me, my second year, I made as much as I had in my 17th year of my graphic design business. So I thought, oh, there's something here. Maybe I should focus on it. So then I, sw- I shifted my focus and I started doing graphic design in the background. And I would still do it for people and I'd create brochures and logos and all that kind of fun stuff for, um, in fact, I did a lot of work for like labor unions in our area. I still continue to do that for probably about five years. But real estate, the opportunity was so great. And because I had a creative ability, I was able to look at a house as a product versus just a house and I was able to market it that way. So I wanted to stand out on the shelf like a product does, right? Stand out in the marketplace. So I spent a lot of time really focusing on that and to be successful in real estate, the average real estate agent sells between eight and 12. And as I got into the last five years of my career prior to here, I was I was doing about 78 transactions a year by myself. I had an admin that did contract to close and that was it. I didn't have a buyer's agent, you know, none of this new team stuff back then. It was just me grinding for years. So, you know, I, I do believe it had a lot to do with the fact that every day I did something real estate related. I was doing, no matter what it was, looking on Craigslist, finding for sale by owners, emailing people over and over again, handwriting out uh, letters, you know, 100, 200, 300, 400 uh, handwritten letters every month. The things that we used to do to get business, it worked. It really does. And I think actually the real estate market is shifting right back to it now. You need to be a little more personal and you have to build your database and, you know, the Internet leads on once what they once were. So, you know, I spent a lot of time. I just did not stop working. And that's I mean, there's no secret to it is I worked my butt off. Yeah. And Mike, for you, I mean, for something that you got into and really you know, really focused heavily on since the time of middle school, what was that like to transition from something that you had put so much into uh, to then eventually transition out of? Well, it wasn't a decision I made overnight. I, I, got, I initially got my real estate license for my own personal use to get into potential investment properties where me and my wife, me and my wife were thinking about, you know, fix and flipping. And so for my last you know, two years in chiropractic practice, and that, a little less than two years, I had my real estate license for my own personal use. Never did buy anything or flip anything. But there was a lot of changes uh, in healthcare at that time. This was when Obamacare was getting rolled out, and I was 100% insurance based. You know, I wasn't a cash based practice, and you know, I relied uh, you know heavily on my you know insurance uh, patients and the amount of business they were allocated. And I remember sitting in my truck, listening to the radio, and waiting to hear if the Supreme Court upheld the mandate or not. And they came on the radio and said, you know, it was upheld. And I went home and told my wife, I said, I can't fight insurance companies for the rest of my life. You know, it, it's getting worse. It's already bad. Uh, I don't see it getting any better. I just, I just can't, I chose not to fight that fight. You know, just, it was just, I didn't feel like 
devoting 100% of my energy in this trying to shift a mindset of the patients into a cash-based practice and, and that uncertainty. And, and like I said, my other passion has always been real estate, you know, so I had the license and I just decided, you know, I wound down my practice uh, from my commercial space. My wife had a CrossFit gym that she uh, owned and operated. So I moved my table into there, continued to see some patients uh, as I built up my real estate transaction. So, you know, to have that, you know, that the income coming in from the chiropractic side, but also, you know, getting those first couple closings under my belt uh, really helped ease some of the stress. And that's like Dion mentioned, and you mentioned you have a lot of people thinking about a career in real estate and having an income coming in while you're building a real estate business is very advantageous uh, to stress reduction, you know, stability, uh, and you also be able to invest because you got to invest into your business in real estate if you want it to succeed. You know, that's what a lot of people don't realize is it's an investment. They want to cost money to get licensed, to keep your license, but you have to invest in your marketing yourself uh, and getting yourself out there. And, and you know, it, it's it's not uh, not free. So that was uh, how I transitioned from the practice in, into, you know, the real estate side. And then, you know, what really helped was also the skill sets that I was able to hone as a chiropractor, you know, the problem solving, the people skills. It is sales. I was selling healthcare, care packages, you know, uh, the need for the care. So I had all the, you know, and a lot of people out there in a lot of, you know, service industries, teachers, uh, state police. We have a lot of those as our previous agents, you know, make great real estate agents because they have the people skills. They connect with people, you know, they have high integrity. Uh, so they have to just, just, Twist, they're just kind of converted to a new product instead of selling healthcare packages. Now I was, I was selling homes and, you know, not dealing with a hundred plus people a week. I was dealing with, you know, five or six, you know, people a week. So, uh, but had all the skills ready just to apply to a new industry, which made it very, very uh, easy and enjoyable, you know, because it's, I, I like helping people and I just get to help people with the biggest purchase of their life on the real estate side. So that's kind of, you know, how I, I transitioned over into it. Right. And I think, you know, for both both of you, having your own uh, businesses that, you know, that you were running prior to that had to help, you know, with that, having that mindset of I need to run my real estate, uh, you know, career like a small business. I need to put the marketing dollars and I have to invest into it because so many people, you know, if they come from a corporate job where they're they're getting that that same paycheck every week, it, they're not the ones that are marketing their services. Uh, that can be a pretty hard uh, transition. I think for yeah, me, also, oh, sorry. Good, yeah, yeah. So, you know, when I had my graphic design business, I had 11 employees at that time. And so we were really growing and we were having literally the best year of our career when the partnership destroyed it. So I had so much to deal with on a personal level, mentally and emotionally, because I loved that business so much. So, you know, to be able to transition and pick something up that was exciting to me because it was new and exciting. Now, 20 years later, like I don't love real estate like I did before. I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> it's a different life, right? 20 oh. years is a long time to be in a, in a career. But I love the beginning was so exciting and looking at houses was fun and you just enjoyed it so much and helping people. That's that part of it will never get old, you know, helping people with their, their one of their largest financial transactions of their life. It's so rewarding, but it's a lot of work because, because HGTV came out and changed it for everyone. Right. They make us all think that that's what it looks like on the other side, not realizing there's sometimes the day before closing, the deal falls apart and you don't get paid. Right. So you have to be strong. So I think building that graphic design business and going through what I went through helped strengthen me for those days and times whenever, you know, things like that did happen. So anyways, I just want to throw that in there. Yeah. And, and me and Dion get asked all the time, like, what is your ideal agent? And, and, and we always say the same thing. I feel there's two types of agents out there. There's the entrepreneurial minded agents or there is the employee mindset agents who want to know what your brokerage can do for them. You know, what are you going to do for me? You know, and and that's the difference we see with the agents that excel quickly come into it knowing that it's hard work that I got to invest in. It's my business. You know, I'm not going to be get the handouts. You know, I got to grow it like organically, like anything else I'm trying to, you know, build from the ground up versus the ones that come out there and you just want to be handed, you know, can I do floor time? Can I, can I do all the things that, you know, years ago, you might've got some clients from floor time today. You're not picking up any clients, but they, they just want handouts. They, they want the easy road, the easy route. And, and you see after, you know, a, a year in, 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 
business, you know, who, who's ahead of them, uh, of the other group. Uh, so our idea, we, we like those entrepreneurial minded agents who want to put the money back in their pocket, you know, who want to, you know, work hard and do the things that they do to be successful. And like Dion said, you know, her first, her second year in real, uh, in real estate, she made more than her 17th year uh, at her graphic design. My first full year in real estate, I made more my previous two years combined as a chiropractor. So, you know, that that's the exciting thing is, you know, and, and you can, you know, grow it to, you know, whatever level, you know, you can envision you can be growing teams, you could have your staff, you know, you can basically run your own operation inside your brokerage. And that was the exciting thing being an entrepreneurial minded person too, was knowing that the sky's the limit really on kind of what you want to grow and which route you want to take once you're, you know, licensed and you know, in production. Right. And so for both of you, when you got into real estate, um, did you look for somewhere where you were going to have a, a mentor that was going to help you walk through those, uh, you know, more the, the sales contract type stuff? If you, you know, because you had some of those skills, like Mike, you had the, the people skills, you had the marketing skills. So maybe looking for that mark, uh, that mentor that's going to help you through some of the legalities and, and those types of things. So for me, I hired a coach very quickly into my career. So for 17 of my 20 years of being in real estate, I've had coaches of some sort, whether it's, you know, real estate coaches, mindset coaches, uh, life coaching. Like I've been through the gamut of coaching. I've been with many real estate coaching companies and I learned so much. Like I was a sponge for the information. And just like professional athletes, I believe that every real estate agent should have a coach because if a professional athletes gets that gets where they're going because of the different coaches that they have. They're not just, for instance, I always use Ben Roethlisberger. He didn't just have a passing coach. He had a mindset coach, a running coach, you know, a, probably a tackling coach to learn how to get tackled. Like there's so many pieces and parts to coaching. It is a critically essential for a real estate agent because we go through a lot in this business. And there's so much to learn. It, it was really, I'd have to say, one of the most important parts of my career and success was being coached. And I you know, want to echo what Dion said is, you know, when I was a chiropractor, you know, being you know, 24 years old and, 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 and going into practice, I thought I knew it all. You know, I, I was, you know, and, and I thought asking for help was, was a, a sign of weakness. And I'm going to figure this out myself and, and take the hard road, you know, in the hard route. And, and I did. And then stubbornly, you know, where I was in, in 10 years, if I would have coaching chiropractic wise, I would have been there probably in three years, you know, and that's what I learned towards the end of my chiropractic was chiropractic career was, see, you know, like Dion always says, seek expert counsel, seek guidance from those who are achieving what you want to achieve or done what you're trying to do before you to, to avoid some of the costly mistakes. And going into real estate, I took that mindset in there with me and like Dion hired a coach from the beginning, ensured that I had, you know, people I could turn to, to guide me, to avoid making the costly mistakes, to achieve the success faster. Uh, and just to have, you know, that person that you can rely on or that coach you could turn to uh, when, you know, the unforeseen happens because, you know, real estate is so dynamic, you know, that, you know, not knowing what you don't know going into it, you can get blindsided around every corner. So that was invaluable was having a coach and, and, and mentor that I could trust and, and lean on for my early success. Absolutely. Uh, it, it, Dian, uh, kind of transitioning to, um, you know, launching uh, Realty One uh, Group, what was it that, because you said you, that you had no, interest in a real estate broker. So I have to ask what happened to, you know, push you uh, to, to go that route. So originally I had been a, a percentage owner in a small family owned company called Northwood here in Pittsburgh. They had about a thousand agents and I had a percentage ownership of that and it was going good. I mean, I wasn't making a lot of extra money doing it, but it was really cool to be the owner of that company. After that, I got an offer to join a real estate team and become their become the partner of the real estate agent who was very successful in our area. So I, I, I let go of my percentage ownership in the small office, went to this big Keller Williams team leader and in hopes that, you know, we would take over the world. And I really believe that we would. And I had such great high hopes. So when I met Mike, I realized that both of us were told the same exact story, but we were just, he was just there before me. And then, and then I said, hmm, that's exactly what I heard too. And then one day I got a contract from that person and it was a contract for me to be the listing agent on the team, not her partner. And that moment, everything shifted for me. So I, was, I wasn't ready to, to own a real estate company, but I knew that I was either going to move south 
or do something else. I just didn't, I was re- like, I was tired of the whole game. It was a lot. I mean, I literally almost ruined my relationship with Jason. That last year was so difficult and I worked like a maniac. I had 78 transactions in and November 7th, I think was, I ruptured my Achilles and I couldn't walk or drive for three months. So I probably would have been at 70, maybe 85 that year because I was, I was on a roll. The biggest transaction of my career, I sold a house to a local Pittsburgh Penguin like I was, I was rolled and I had these horse blinders on, like no one was stopping me that year until like that, it went up my leg. And so <laughs> that changed everything for me. So at that point I thought, all right, well, I don't know what to do. Mike came along and said, this company looks amazing. So I think it was the excitement. He had such great excitement for it, which then excited me about it. And knowing that I could make a difference even more than I thought, like I always loved helping people But this allowed me to help them in many different ways. It allowed me to be their coach too, right? Without actually saying I'm a coach, I could coach them through all of this and help them get to their next level. And I've been doing that for so long and I do love it. So that's really what helped me transition into ownership of this degree is the fact that we could literally change people's lives, their money, their mind, you know, their their kids. Like we affect them in so many positive ways. And, and Dion's background is a graphic designer. I, I knew when I when I first met the Realty once, I met with them b- by myself first before I, you know, talked Dion in and checking them out with me, is I knew the marketing and the brand and the, the graphic design would blow her away because she's amazing at it. You know, she can design like no other and she has that eye. And it was just, it was the, the marketing material that Realty One had versus their else on our market was leaps and bounds ahead of it. I knew, I knew she would get excited about the marketing and and, and it did work. <laughs> it works. So then he's like, can you come back? And I'm like, no, I'm not going there. Like, I don't want to go to look at this. <laughs> but, but we did. And here we are seven. Well, it's been, it'll be seven years, I think, since we went there. Probably this month, Mike, it's been seven years since we actually drove out there. And okay, yeah. we've actually yeah. owned the bridge and been open since January of 2018. And we had ex- explosive growth the first two years. It was amazing. And then to be honest with you, like our franchise model, they put people down and they put other franchises close to us. But I think we would probably be at 500 agents if that hadn't happened because we were rolling and it was so exciting. And we were doing all this fun stuff. We bought three off three franchises in the first year and we were just super excited. So, you know, it takes, it's, it's like anything else. There's a roller coaster ride of being an owner too. There's a lot, we go through a lot it's, and it's not all positive. We make it, it looks good on social media, right? We have this good look, everything like they're so fun. Everybody wants to open a real T1 group, but then they do and they're like, it's not as fun as you guys make it look. Yeah. <laughs> but, and Mike, you know, when it came time uh, for you guys to, to open this, what was it, um, you know, what were you looking for in a partner? And then, you know, how has that, how did that dynamic um, lead to such success that you had early on? Yeah, you know, you know, most of the stats out there is most businesses fail within the first five years. I think most partnerships, it's like two years, you know, uh, especially having a male and female, you know, it's not, not quite as common as a partnership either. So being gone into our seventh, you know, year of business here, uh, in January of next year, uh, is, is a rarity. And, you know, from day one, when I was at Keller Williams, you know, when Dion joined the brokerage, you know, I was told about, you know, how great of an agent she was. And then I got to finally know how great of a person she was, uh, you know, through, you know, getting to know each other at, at being individual agents there. But what I, I, you know, looked for or what made the partnership and makes it work is we both, both really, we're very a lot of like personality wise, but we also bring two vastly different skill sets, you know, to, to the company. Uh, and which is a great, it's a great checks and balances, you know, you know, to the company as well. But, you know, just on the real estate side of things, you know, Dion is the, the graphic designer. She is the sphere of influence, the, the referral queen where I was the, the lead generating Zillow converting, you know, get a contract under, you know, to close and move on to the next deal and, and go on and conquer. You know, I, I didn't build those relationships where she did, you know, and just having, you know, two different business approaches, different mindsets uh, and skill sets really help our agents be able to tap into, you know, what we're, we were best at when we were, you know, rocking and rolling in production uh, to be able to help them. Cause you know, we have agents of, you know, kind of very similar. Some just go after leads. Some are the, the sphere of influences. We try to marry them together now and, and, and explain the benefits of tapping into all those resources and doing them all well. But, you know, it just, it just carries over to the brokerage, you know, again, the, the like-mindedness, uh, 
we're both ambitious, uh, you know, both have big goals and, and we both, you know, to the core of us want to help agents succeed and, and, and achieve goals and, 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 and achieve their dreams and, and help, you know, coach them along that journey and be part of it is, is truly why you know, it's, it's been working so well. Yeah, absolutely. And in, in the end, how important was it, you know, I, I love the fact that you have such different um, backgrounds and skill sets, but at the core of it, you guys do have the same core values in wanting to uplift your agents and, and change, you know, not only their lives, but like you said, you know, their kids' lives. Yeah, I'd say it was extremely important because for me to make this kind of commitment, that was one of the most important things. And I met Mike, I remember one day we went and met at this uh, this bagel shop and I walked in and he was reading the Bible at a restaurant. And I looked down and I thought, hmm, I don't know many men that would do that. Like I really hadn't met anyone that was that faithful, that was not feared of being faithful, other people's thinking, right? It didn't matter. And so for me, that was a very pivotal moment because I thought he's a great family man. He loves his kids. He loves his wife. I don't have to worry about people talking about us, saying things about us because I was in a relationship with someone I had been with at that point for 17 years. And I didn't want any crossover, right? I wanted someone that I could trust, that would have my back and that had great faith because in my own faith walk, there's been some questions along my way, right? And I remember there's been plenty of times when I reached out to Mike and he sent me back exactly what I needed to hear. So that was very important. When it comes to, when it came to actually, you know, building your brokerage and hiring on agents, what were you and what do you look for in agents uh, to come join your team? I mean, what Mike said earlier, the entrepreneurial agent is our absolute favorite because they get it. They want to run it as a business. In our area, we have a couple of big companies that have been at that like really low commission splits, but they they teach the agent that you have that you need them to succeed versus the fact is you are the success. So, you know, we need those agents to understand that because once someone has been at a company for 15, 20 years, of that mindset, it's really hard to shift them because they really don't think they can do it without their company. So that we are definitely looking for entrepreneurial agents, but we have made so many mistakes, right, Mike? We've hired some. <laughs> we were so excited about them too. We're like we're like, wow, they really speak well, and I'm super excited until until I remember the one who like we, she went after our, our broker and was trying to fight with her, and we had to call the police. So yes, yeah, so we've been through the ups and downs. It's always like this. This is life. This is real estate. This is stock market. This is the way it is. It's a constant roller coaster ride. I think we're thinking again, we had, you know, brought some, you know, some agents have duped us, you know, in the interview and, you know, initially meeting them, they, they were fantastic, you know, in person on paper to actually got out and dealing with the public and, you know, and, and, and representing the company. So I think the key with that was in some things we're talking good producers, 40, 50 transactions, you know, $20 million producers, you know, that we let go, we fired them right away. We didn't put up with it. It wasn't what we stood for, what our, you know, our core values were. So we didn't put up with it and we try to change them or, you know, give them the third, fourth, fifth, you know, opportunity to, to correct themselves. We, we, we said, you know what, this is a good fit. And we, we parted ways. So I think that was, that's a big thing. And, and it really, solidified our, you know, ourselves in front of our other agents to realize we're not going to put up with this. We do stand for, you know, integrity and, and, and honesty and, and, and representing royalty one in the marketplace uh, the way it should be represented. So you're going to make those, no matter what, if you're growing a team, if you're building a brokerage, you're going to get a bad apple here and there. But my biggest advice is, is you know, cut bait fast, get rid of them, you know, uh, because the, 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 the cancer they could cause inside, even unbeknownst to you, is going to be way more detrimental. Uh, than, than a transaction you lose by, you know, cutting cutting them loose. So like the entrepreneurial agent, the honest agents, and right now is with 200 agents, we asked most of our agents for referrals from agents they had a great transaction with. You know, who, who was an agent you would like to see part of the brokerage because you guys worked well together, the transaction was smooth, they were honest, you know, you know, ticked all the boxes. So we're, we're, we mostly look for internal referrals now to avoid, you know, some of those, you know, bad hires. <laughs> Yeah, one of them. Actually, another piece of advice I think anybody that's thinking about opening, if they want to sign that same day, 
there's usually a really big reason, <laughs> right? Because <Right? laughs> most people have stuff they have to clear up and get through, right? To before they just join. But we met this one person I can remember clearly. We met them. We were so excited. He's like, I'm doing like five million in Florida and like two million, three million here. We're like, that's a great, you know, great agent. Well, we didn't have any way to check the Florida stuff, right? But we were so excited. He goes, and I want to join today. Not one time did we think about that. Like, what about all the stuff he has going on, right? You know, most companies, they don't give you your stuff when you leave. <laughs> oh my gosh, how long did it take, Mike? About a month? And it, about a month and we're like, oh my gosh, what do we do? <laughs> so we've definitely, we are not afraid to say we've made some mistakes along the way. Yeah. Something I, uh, when I was um, just kind of getting prepared uh, over the last couple of days, I uh, was on your YouTube page and I, and I came across a video, Mike, you talking about, you know, how loyalty is reciprocal. And I really love that idea of, you know, um, you know, as a leadership group, you know, showing that you are loyal to your employees and, and making that visible, making that known and how important that is to building a strong company culture. Um, how important is that to you guys, both as leaders um, to, you know, a, a just really having a strong company culture, but really focus on it and, and make that something that is something that is a, uh, you know, kind of one of those paramount focuses for you uh, with your agents. I think it comes down to is we're, we're you know we're on the same team and you know some you know sometimes when agents have come from other brokerages where they didn't have the support or the trust or you know uh, just whatever could have happened in their past, a lot of them come with you know their guard up and, and you know and and I think you know once you show them we're going to go to bat for you you know we're here to fight for you for the transaction you know whatever it may be uh, then we're on your team we're your advocate you know we're not your adversary uh, no matter what happened in the past and just showing them that we again we operate with integrity and in everything we do uh, you know and and that builds the loyalty you know they, they see that we operate different uh, and, it, and, it, and it's not just one or the other it's, it's a unified front uh, and that is the most powerful thing I can think you could you show your agents is uh, the consistency and your willingness to go to bat for them, you know, and, and it, it extends from our staff or COO our broker of record, you know, we're, we're there to support them every way we can. Now, when I say, we're, you know, if they come in and we know that, that they did something wrong inadvertently or whatever, you know, it's a learning experience then, you know. But I think, you know, when, no matter what decision we make, we got to be consistent in it. It's not like, you know, our top producer, we did this and this was the outcome of the situation because they were a top producer and you're just new and this is how it's going to be for you. You know, it, it's we're, you know, straight across the board. You know, our, our standard is the standard. That's why we're the gold standard is our, our name, but it, it's the truth. It is there, you know, and our COO, you know, lives by those those values too is, you know, when we make a decision, this has to be for not just for this person, but this is going to be our, you know, our, you know, model moving forward or, you know, cause we just had a, a situation that arose last week with a new agent and a mentor in our mentor program that never rose before. So we had, you know, we had to navigate through that to, to come to a fair resolution, but now not knowing that situation could arise. Now we have a standard and now we know how to approach that no matter who it is or whatever happens again. So even being six years of business, just last week we had an occurrence that was a learning experience that we had to put, you know, into, into our new art policies that, uh, you know, we had, to, we have to stick with now. So just show the agents that we're consistent. There's no favoritism and we're their advocate uh, is what, you know, builds the loyalty up. Uh, and it sometimes it takes a long time for a lot of agents. Like I said, a lot of them have a lot of baggage from being, you know, leads distributed away from them or, you know, they felt they were wronged. And, and, and it has happened to brokerages, uh, you know. So that's kind of, you know, my my take on that is, you know, just just be consistent and, and, and be there for them. Yeah, absolutely. And, Dion, you mentioned earlier about um, how much you enjoy coaching agents and how, how big of a part um, – you know, how much joy that gives you and just kind of how it reinvigorates you. Tell me about what kind of, what kind of coaching you do and why that is so important to you as um, a leader. So I never really called myself a coach in all of this, right? But I know that we're coaching. And for me, it's a lot of mindset. It's definitely a lot of marketing, but the mindset is where it starts. Like if you don't have your mindset right, you'll never get to where you want to go. And so It'll be an agent, I need to talk. I really need 
just 20 minutes, you know? And so they'll come in and we'll sit down and we'll go through 20 minutes. I give them all these ideas and we'll talk through it and then walk out the door and they're like, Oh my gosh, I'm totally, you know, I'm totally revived. And then they'll have the best year of their career. Like those little shifts. I mean, it takes that time. It's not a lot of time, but it's that time. Now I think, as we grow, we'll be more consistent in doing more coaching per se. But I feel like every day we're coaching someone somehow in this company. Uh, we've never just put a name on it like that. We've, you know, we've done a lot of training and, you know, I do a lot of show and tell where I'm showing them how to use software and different things like that. You know, we, you ask about loyalty and I, and I think that n not being a mother, which has, for me has been, I'm 56, I've never had kids. Having this company of 200 people, I feel like the mama bear of everyone, right? I'm always sticking. I mean, even Mike, I'll stick up for him too. Like I remember one time I stuck up for him. It was so funny. Like I am so loyal to all of them. It's sick. Like it's almost to the point where it's, I'm too loyal because when someone leaves our company, it is devastating to me. To the point where Mike and I've had so many call talks about it. He's like, "Do you, you got it? It's okay. It's okay. They're only here for a short time. They're not. They don't. They're not always here forever." So I guess I, I feel like for me, I'm I'm so loyal that I always expect the same thing. But you don't always get that. But I'm okay with it now because I've learned a lot in these in these last six and a half years. I've sat beside someone that the week later they they walked out and left after they sat there with me for hours working with me. So I've learned a lot and as I've grown, so if I, I have to, I'm that person that has to have all the lessons so that I can teach them. Right, Mike? He even said that to me a couple of weeks ago. He's like, man, you have a lot of stuff happening in your life. And I feel like it's just, it's kind of like Job, but not so bad, where he had all that stuff happen, you know, just so that he can be a better person and it helps me to teach them. So I've been through a lot in 20 years. And so I can share that. I can share the loss of my business. I can share, you know, the, the current loss of my father. Like I can share things that they're going through. You know, there was a period when I lost my company, I had 14 people die in two years. Years. It was so devastating, but it taught me a lot about death, right? And about life. So I can teach about a lot of different things because I've been through a lot. So anyways, that's why I love, I do love that. I love being able to, to pick them up. I've been doing a thinking grow rich mastermind for six and a half years. In this last two years, we've been doing it weekly. And I have one, like eight people in the group and six of them are agents and they're doing so well. And watching them succeed and knowing that they're just doing step by step with me, following along with, you know, principles of success and using that to grow has been enlightening. Prior to that, the people that used to be in the group, I've watched their dream board, like everything come off the board. I've watched them succeed professionally, personally, their marriages get better. So I've been through a lot, but I, sh so I can share a lot. And I really like, you know, the the idea of um, focusing on that mindset as part of the, you know, maybe it's not, like you said, maybe there's not like a necessary um, title for the coaching or just being there to be that kind of mindset champion and to really uh, make sure that people are working on their mindset. Because I know for me personally, uh, working on my mindset was something that I really started doing at the beginning of this year. And just six months in, I see a total change yeah. in my life. And I think there's so many people that um, they kind of push that, aside and it's you know i'm only i'm i'm going to learn you know the technical things or how to sell how to sell how to sell and they don't focus on you know themselves and the mind you know the mindset of success and uh, it, it really kind of puts a cap on where they can get if they I don't agree focus. and it's it's difficult it's work like you can't just read a book and be like i have a great mindset <laughs> every day you have to do something to help you and there's sometimes like the other day i got mad about i got mad i was so angry that then i got mad at my own self because i know that that's not how i want to be you know and so you're not we're not going to be perfect at it because life there's so many things coming at us what is it sixty thousand messages every single day that you have to filter through just to get back to yourself like it's a lot but if you if i didn't know what i know about mindset i could not be where i am today yeah the last topic i want to touch on um is uh strategic collaboration and how important that is to your company and, and the growth that you have seen uh, in the collaboration between the two of you, but then also, you know, the collaboration with your agents and, you know, the different levels of your uh, business. I think, you know, one of the biggest things I think that separates our agents and our brokerage is how the agents collaborate together. Because, uh, you know, just from our found 
the, the founding of our company, we've set, you know, things in place that our brokerages have, have, didn't have in place that have adapted and, and has changed the market and the way they do things because what we have, what we've done. But one of the biggest things is, uh, is the collaboration is from agents sharing other agents' listings and marketing other listings inside the brokerage for lead generation purposes for the agents that's sharing it and also for the listing agent as it listed to be able to use that in their listing presentations to say, hey, Mr. Mr. Seller, we have 200 agents that are allowed to market your listing on their social media without having to get my permission, without me per- no, not permitting them because that's exactly why me and Dion we, on day one put this in place is because that said team that, you know, put me and Dion through the same kind of ropes that Keller Williams. I went to her one day and she had a $500,000 listing sitting on the market for months and months and months. And I couldn't figure out why it hasn't sold. And I said, hey, you know, that listing over there, uh, do you care if I throw it up on my Facebook page? And I'll put like a $50, $100 boost behind it and see if I can find a buyer. And she goes, absolutely not. That's my listing. I said, well, that's why I'm coming to you ask if I can do it. She goes, that's my job. And I just sat there dumbfounded. Like I'm offering free marketing, you know, back, you know, Eight, nine years ago, you could really hone in on Facebook. If you remember, you could really get down to the demographics, the income, the occupation. You could really hone down. So I, I can find a buyer. I'm just thinking, what do you think that seller would think if they knew that their agent is restricting another agent from trying to get a buyer for that house? So that's why we put that policy in place. And that just has built a foundation of our agents working together, uh, sharing ideas, mastermind together with Dion's mindset. You know, she has done many masterminds. We've gotten accountability groups together. We have a private Facebook group where agents ask for help all day long and and, ask, and sit open houses or give leads out to each other. It's just an, an, 200 agents that are actually truly working together, helping each other. And I don't care if you're a top producer or whatever. If you just reach out to them, they'll open up their playbook for you. It's not like, oh, this is my secret sauce. You can't have it. Well, this is what I do. And they, 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 they you know, they just willingly share it, you know, with other agents because they want everybody to succeed. And there's so much business out there. And that goes back to mindset. If you realize there's so much business out there for everybody to be successful, it's not like, well, if I get this listing, I just took money out of your pocket because now you're not going to be successful. No, there's 7,000 agents in the West Penn Malta list in Southwestern Pennsylvania go after their market share. As Realty One work together, it's all, we're all going to rise together and benefit together if we all work together. And, and our agents do really, you know, live by that and, and, and practice that daily, which is awesome to see, truly. That is amazing. I love it. Yeah. And, and, and what has it been like uh, for some of these agents that maybe came in, from other places and had that experience where it was very closed off. There was no collaboration. There was no sharing of listings. What's it been like when you've like kind of unveiled that to them? Like, Hey, it, it, everybody's working together here. Oh, they love it. They've never seen anything like it. And I think that for them, especially agents that maybe haven't closed a lot of deals, this gives them an opportunity to put their show, their reality show on, on social media, right? They show that they're a real estate agent. If you don't have listings, it's hard. It, for any other company, it's hard for you to showcase that. So we teach them how to do it and they're so excited and they do it. And it's, it's been really career changing for them because they can come here and we're all one versus, you know, you list with one of us, you list with all of us. That's kind of our little motto that we've been using for over the years. And to go out on a listing appointment and share that fact with, with sellers, they look at you like, what do you mean? Like, how does that happen? Because my last agent that was here said that they would take care of all the marketing. Well, it's just been, it's gives opportunity changing. How's that? It gives them a much bigger opportunity to grow their business in ways they had. We had one agent who actually was doing that and he was new in the business and he ended up getting an, uh, another one of the Pittsburgh Penguins reached out and said, Hey, I saw this listing on social media. It wasn't his listing. And he was able to sell it to them. That was thousands. I mean, probably thirty, forty thousand $40,000 worth of commission over sharing a listing. That's just mm-hmm. one story, but it happens mm-hmm. all the time. Every. The cool thing is, Michael, when, when agents come to us and, add, and ask permission again, are you sure we can do this? Yeah. Are, you, are you sure we're allowed yeah. to do this? They, 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 sometimes yeah. they have to do it like two or three times. Like, yes, you're allowed to do this. You know, yeah. same thing on the commission side. There's been numerous times agents got their first check. and like, I think you made a mistake. Yeah. This, this can't be my check. Like, <laughs> that's your check, you know. So and that, that's the cool yeah. part is, you know, they're just so conditioned, completely opposite the way we operate. Is they, it takes them a while to realize this is your new reality, you know, and, and they ask over and over again. So that, that's the fun, cool part to see. 
It is really cool. One of our agents, I can just remember her crying, like sobbing when she called me in her first closing. She goes, are you sure you guys took all the money that you need? And I'm like, I mean, that's what, that's what this model is like. You know, you get to keep most of it. So, and she was so happy and she's been so grateful from that first day because she worked at a company for 10 years, giving them half the commission. So in her next, well, she's been here five years, she's almost gotten all of it. So her life has changed so much in the last five years. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just from a, you talked about that new agent, um, some of the, the people that we work with and some of the coaching that we do, uh, we get that question all the time of, well, how do I, you know, how do I show that I've been, had success as an agent if I'm brand new, if you don't have the testimonials to your own name, but if you're, if you're sharing your your fellow agents listings and I mean, you can really fill up a social media profile pretty quickly and, and start building that expert, you know, uh, kind of cachet pretty quickly by uh, sharing your fellow agents. Uh, For sure. Listings. Yeah. I mean, that's the exciting thing about those thinking about getting the real estate now from, you know, another occupation, you know, or, or to do alongside with their current occupations. Like, I really feel that there's really no better time to get into the market because, I hate to say it is a lot of people got lazy, you know, all through COVID. And, 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 and I think there's, it's really no easier time with, with the right coach and right mentor to outwork your competition, to be on social media in front of more and more people and just sharing, you know, your story. You, doesn't, you don't have to again be, have all the experience, but on social media, if you're sharing, you know, going to open houses, offering to do open houses, uh, going to broker opens, taking a video there, you know, talk about the house, tour the house on video. I mean, there's countless ways to build up your presence on social media, showing your personality, that you're trustworthy, that you're likable, that you know what you're talking about in real estate, to build that credibility faster than ever. I, I think it's just a, such an opportune time to, to, to jump into the, to the field. Absolutely. Well, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but uh, I do have to ask you, you know, You've obviously had great success already. What are some of the, the future goals uh, for your group? So, you know, uh, one of our future goals is, you know, we, with, with the brokerage you know, going on, you know, seven years uh, coming up in January, uh, we've made uh, a great hire almost two, a little two years ago. We have a COO in place. So the brokerage and operational side is pretty much running itself, which is very freeing and, 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 and nice to see. And me and Dion, being the entrepreneurial spirits we are, uh, and you know the collaborations we work together, and we're both you know firing on all cylinders. We're very powerful together. Is that we're we're launching a coaching program together uh, called Career Shift, actually focusing on individuals who want a career shift either uh, alongside their current career or looking for a new opportunity to build uh, the life of their dreams through becoming a real estate agent and guiding them through the licensing process, the mindset. Uh, skills that are transferable uh, and also in their current career and get them into production uh, quickly and successfully. So we're going to be, you know, we're, we're working on putting that program together, just combining all the, the 1,200 homes plus we sold together, the, the $2 billion in sales and the brokerage, the things we've learned, the marketing, and just putting a nice program together because we feel we both transitioned out of our careers, made a great success out of it, and we want to help others, you know, outside the brokerage across the nation, you know, do the same thing. For sure. I think it's going to be very interesting, too, for recruiting, right? So other agents will be interested because we can offer that inside of our brokerage for our agents. And that's just going to help them even get better and better. So they'll be more competitive in the market. There's, you know, we have, what I think, almost 8,000 agents here. So you have a lot of competition. So we can teach you how to stand out. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, for people... For people that are listening to this, where can they uh, find out uh, more about uh, you guys to, to hear some more about this stuff, but then also to to know when this coaching program is going to be available? I mean, I think if they reach out to either of us personally on social media, like I'm, we definitely have a big social media presence and at Dion Realty One PGH is my Instagram and just Dion Malish on Facebook and DionMalish.com. That's my website. So that's how you get a hold of me and Mike. Yeah. My, my easiest way is, is just through email, uh, you know, Michael at Gold Standard Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, if, if, if anybody out there, I mean, it doesn't have to be somebody looking to, it could be a, a current agent, it could be somebody thinking about getting into real estate. It could just be a business owner, you know, heck, it could be a chiropractor, you know, anybody just, you know, just, you know, we like just helping people. And that's the cool thing about, you know, one thing I wanted to mention too is the similarity between chiropractic and real estate. When you're working with the public, 
is a lot of times like Dion working on the mindset or, you know, just being being an ear to listen. You're, there's, there's a lot of, you know, I feel like a psychologist sometimes, you know, or a psychiatrist, you know, just, to just you know, solving people's problems or, or like trying to walk them through, you know, this difficulty they're going through outside of the transaction or the, or the, the care plan you're putting them through. So we just love helping people in general. Uh, so as we, you know, get more uh, ready to roll out the program, we'll definitely be back in touch and, and, and circle back and, uh, you know, and talk more about it. But, uh, you know, just reach out to me directly on email or social media. Uh, more happy, happy to help any way I can. Awesome. I really do appreciate you uh, both taking the time to uh, talk with me today. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you, Michael. I want to thank Dion and Mike for taking the time to speak with us today and really love how they encourage their agents to collaborate with one another and promote each other's listings. Remember, if you'd like to follow or connect with Realty One Group Gold Standard, be sure to check out the episode description. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story of real estate success or tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.